What we have here is an in-focus DLP projector from around 2007. The unfortunate thing is, this particular projector is no longer properly functioning. Um, I have no intentions of repairing it. I actually got this from work simply to make a video showing how DLP projectors actually work. So, I've got my laptop hooked up to it. Let's uh, see if we can get an image out of it. Okay, if you were attentive, you would have heard a really quick winding up sound, more like a camera flash um, capacitor. What you heard was the collar wheel spinning up. And that is, I believe, is the problem with this projector, particularly. If not that, it could be the collar wheel engine itself. You know, I just noticed this projector is working perfectly fine. And uh, there isn't a damn thing wrong with it. Now, how can that possibly be? Well, it could be a bad connection. Intermittent. Alright, let's go ahead and make this our primary display. Because when I had this at work, I could not get it to work at all. Well, not very well anyway. We're going to set our resolution down to 800 by 600, which is about what that thing can handle safely. And it is now our primary display. Let's bring it up to 1024 by 768. All right, let's see what that does. Okay, that's a little more natural. Kill some lights. Let's take a good look at the image. All right. Looking pretty good. You see that flicker? That is because the color wheel spins at a rate that this camera is not um, liking very much. Now if I point the camera towards an LCD display, it's damn near perfect. So we're going to take the projector apart and take a good look at the engine, the light engine, and the um, the unit as a whole, but what really vexes me right now is this projector looks pretty damn good. Hmm. Okay, well, looks like I'll be bringing it back to work to see if I can't get it to function again in its proper home. But I might let it run for a little while to see if the thing acts up again. So let's go ahead and shut it down, let it cool off. And then we'll pull it apart and take a look at uh, what's what. Okay. Alright, so I'm beginning the stages of disassembling this projector. I've already uh, unscrewed the bulb. And I'm now going to lift it out with this cavity. Set it aside. Now this bulb is housed in a fairly high quality housing. It's all metal. I haven't seen anything like that before. That might be one of the longer life bulbs. Once we have the bulb out, you can actually see the color wheel, or part of it, right there. And I'm going to try to explain to you how this actually works. It's pretty cool. Um, a little more complex than LCD projectors. But the benefit is actually... Well, there is a benefit there, so... All right, so I've got the top cover removed, and I'm going to show you uh, basically what many of these components actually do. Um, from what I can tell, all right, the collar wheel is right here. There, it's made of glass, and it's tinted three different colors and transparent. Somewhere in this vicinity is the actual image generator, uh, which is more than likely let's try to get a good idea as to what the direction of flow is so we have underneath this is the light tunnel here the light bulb is located in here 
And what that does is it sends the light through the color wheel, which pre-colors it in, cord in, in, um, in synchronization with the DLP chip. Um, actually, there's another, I think it's called the DMD chip. And what it is, is a semiconductor that's coated with 1,024 by 768 mirrors. So that's 1,024 times 768. Let me figure that out. 786,432. They're microscopic. So we have all those mirrors coating a chip that has the ability to tilt the chip in either a straight path towards the color wheel or it can tilt it downward or upward, as the case may be, um, towards a heat sink which actually absorbs the heat generated by the light. Now how that makes an image is actually pretty simple. Let's say the native resolution of the projector is 1024 by 768. Now this is a gross oversimplification. There actually are variances in that depending on the, the technology used. Um, and this again is a single chip model. A single chip will have a color wheel, a three chip will not. So we have this, for all intents and purposes, a chip that produces an image. Um, and what it actually does is it turns each pixel on and off by tilting the mirror. And as the color is, now it generates a black and white image. Okay. And what it actually is doing is generating each color one frame at a time. Um, so it'll do red, the red portion of the image, then the blue, then the green, vice versa. Or it'll mix the colors so fast you don't even notice a difference. So I believe I believe it's RGB. So let's see. We have a um, let's see if we get a light in here. That looks like the blue. We have yellow and blue. Wait a minute. I'm going to need to get some light in there so we can actually see the colors. Um, okay. So we have blue. We have clear. We have green and we have what looks like it could be red so what it's doing is it's generating now in a three a three color projector like a three tube projector each tube generates one portion or the portion that corresponds to the color of the tube of the image when they're all mixed together they produce a solid image of um, normal natural color same principle, only it does it one color at a time. So it's projecting red, green, blue, clear, red, green, blue, clear so fast that it appears as though the image is a solid image. But when in fact, if you were to slow, if you were to record it and slow down the frame rate enough, you would see each color flashed on the screen individually. An LCD projector produces all three colors at the same time and blends them with a series of mirrors and lenses. So we've got that portion uh, of, of the technology figured out. Now the chip for act that actually creates the image is located I believe inside this lens body and the light comes through the appropriate color is is uh, is timed so let's say we're doing the blue image it then shines it through this lens here If we can get that there. So it goes through this lens into this sealed body. And uh, I believe the chip is located on the back of this board. If I were to take this lens body away from the board, you would see the chip down in there. So it shines it through a couple of um, directional mirrors onto that mirrored chip. And uh, it then broadcasts that image through the lens. And that's how you have a... Um, that's again a gross oversimplification of how the image is generated. Now on here, actually I think it's right down there, you have a, um, a positioning sensor that tells the computer, the onboard computer, what position the color wheel is in. If it senses a discrepancy or it doesn't agree with the position, um, that could mean a failing um, 
color wheel. Uh, so there's a couple of failure modes that affect these. Number one, light bulbs. They're very expensive. Most people don't even bother changing the bulbs. They'll just buy a whole new unit. The second mode of failure is color wheels. They do fail, and they fail apparently quite often. The third mode of failure is logic circuitry, or heat management issues causing um, causing failures electronically. The chips also do fail, I believe. Um, but there's another mode of failure that uh, you might not think of. The color wheels themselves can fade over time and produce washed out colors. I haven't seen this myself, but I have heard of it. What I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and power the projector on and we're going to watch it in, watch it in action and uh, hopefully I don't blow something up. And as promised, I'm going to now show you how the projector works while it's apart and you can actually see the color wheel in action. So I've got it all hooked up. We're going to press the power switch. See the color wheel just spun up. So what you're essentially looking at is three colors, well actually four colors because you've got the, the uh, blank wheel portion which produces no color at all, it just produces a black image. You're watching this all happen right in front of you. Of course you can't see it because it's happening so fast. And this brings me to my next point. One of the drawbacks of a DLP projector, especially the older single chip models, is that they are prone to, now see as you can see this slight flicker, if I had a higher speed camera I would definitely be able to show you a little more about that, but um, one of the downfalls with the DLP projector is some people are sensitive to the color change, like if you blink your eyes at the right time you'll actually see a solid red or a solid blue image, and some people are more sensitive to this than others, um, it just depends on the person. So newer technologies have made it possible for a completely seamless image similar to an LCD projector um, that produced three colors at the same time. Um, those are obviously color wheel free projectors and they don't, uh, they don't suffer from many drawbacks. Now I would like to touch this color wheel and just see what it does um, just to verify something that I've been curious about but I'm not going to do that because the projector is still functioning and I'm going to reassemble it and return it back to work so they can get some more use out of it. But that would have been kind of interesting. I could, if I could freeze it in one position, like I just, it just did this to me. I blinked as I was looking at the color wheel and I saw a solid red where I saw three colors at the same time. It was real interesting. But uh, I do believe this, oh there we go, there's the, that, that prism, it, there we go, yes, I, I see. The image is directed through a prism. You can actually see it here. It's a triangular shaped piece of glass and it, it basically provides a gap free uh, path for the image to pass from the from the light end of it all the way to the uh, mirrored end. So let's see if we can't uh, get a better image of that. So you're looking straight into the light tunnel right there. Adjustments to this prism can be made through these screws here. If the projector were ever dropped, you could theoretically recalibrate it. Interesting. And it's driven by that tiny little motor. Of course, it doesn't need much. And it is timed perfectly. If this was even slightly off, you would notice instantly. But the image is perfectly clear and uh, precise, exactly what you want in a uh, projector. So that's good stuff. And this heat sink obviously is used to absorb the massive amount of heat that is uh, collected by that chip from the light engine. And we're going to go ahead and power her down. go. Now this projector actually has a secondary fault in the audio system. The right channel um, is 
quite noisy. It buzzes and crackles. Uh, but the left channel works perfectly fine. So what we do is we run it through an audio, not splitter, but we join it in, in a Y cable. And that way you get the, uh, the full mono sound out of it. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. <clears throat> I'm going to have to power it back up again. I didn't let it cool down. I, I unplugged it at the wrong time. So let's get her back up. And then we'll let her do a full shutdown. The danger of unplugging a projector before letting it cool down um, is that you can cause a shortened lifespan of the electronics. You don't want all that heat build up in there. It's generally not recommended. And for some reason it didn't power up. Oh, I must have knocked the bottom door loose. What's nice about this particular projector is the bulb heats up instantly. I mean, it produces light almost instantaneously, which is better than any of the LCD projectors I've ever used. Um, you now it's doing its startup logo, because there's nothing hooked up to it. There we go. Just let her cool down. And that concludes this video. And just for the record, this was an in-focus projector model... Um, what the hell is this thing? W240 from 2007. Thanks for watching.